Howdy, Ilmar Talim here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Prophecy, the complete series. Let's start off with what it's about. So, you know, what is Prophecy about? Well, Prophecy is about this guy right here, <laughs> this pleasant looking chap called Paperboy. Uh, basically, he is a um, masked vigilante. Uh, the story opens up with him actually broadcasting over the internet a stream where he basically tells everyone he's going to change the world. Now, we cut after that to a kind of a crime scene. Uh, basically, there's this um, anti-cyber crimes division headed up by a woman called Yoshino. And basically, they're investigating um, this room uh, where this teenager uploaded several games onto the internet, which caused huge amounts of damage to the uh, video game companies involved. So basically, you know, they're questioning him, etc., etc. He thinks, you know, that it's okay, that he didn't do anything wrong, that he didn't make any money out of it. And then, of course, she points out, well, there's all these advertisements on the website, uh, so you did clearly make money. You bought, like, three PSPs. And he was like, no, but if the games are any good, you know, people go out and buy them themselves. She was like, nah, that's not how it works. <laughs> so, and she actually makes a very, um, uh, like, a, a, when he's starting to cry down because he's lost the support of everyone online, she actually threatens to, like, she says, if I had my way, I would actually beat the crap out of you and throw you in jail and, like, not let you out ever. Uh, which is very aggressive, in fairness, considering he's, like, I don't, he looks about 14, 15, etc., etc. Anyway, they get back to their offices uh, to find out about this threat made by Paperboy. And basically, Paperboy uh, said that in the next day that he would burn a, um, a building, essentially. A building that had, you know, committed quote-unquote crime, but not really. You know, it basically committed bad stuff without actually committing a crime. Uh, so basically, uh, they successfully burned the building. The police, the uh, Cyber Crimes Division, uh, they get a bit of information here and there. And they begin their investigation into this masked vigilante paperboy. That's how, kind of how the story begins. And I'm sorry if I wasn't too specific um, when beginning that. But the first chapter actually doesn't really cover too much of the, you know, overall continuing story. That bit I talked to you about, the teenager bit, is completely standalone. You know, it has no real relevance on the rest of the story beyond establishing, you know, for example, Yoshino's character, that she's very aggressive, that she wants to beat the crap out of, you know, anyone who can who breaks the law. It's a little hard to describe at the beginning, but um, let's get on to the actual, kind of, my opinions on the story. So, basically, what did I think of the story? Uh, I will confess, the first volume didn't grip me. Um, it, I liked the first volume, but I didn't find it, you know, as amazing as everyone had been making it out to be. This is a very well-claimed series. Um, my issues with the first volume was, first of all, None of the characters I really, like, connected to. Uh, so, for example, Yoshino there. Of course, you guys don't need to know my opinion on Paris. I absolutely hate it. But when she threatened to, you know, beat the crap out of that boy, when he was already, like, you know, crying and weeping in tears, and, you know, she, you know, left him to be stirring up in his own muck, you know, that was a bit harsh, you know. So I did find that a little awkward. The other two characters, the other two um, members of the division are a bit underdeveloped as well. And we don't really find too much out about uh, Paperboy and his group uh, in the first volume. So overall, not really too much to actually latch on to. The story itself begins nicely enough once they actually get into the Paperboy arc. He uploads a uh, live stream. Uh, he will say that I will do this crime the next day. And, you know, the police try to stop it. And he somehow gets through uh, in a very clever manner. Uh, which, you know, of course is fantastic and it's great to figure out, you know, how Paperboy managed to succeed to do this and we're finding out more and more about Paperboy and his methods and his ideology, etc, etc. Um, but not overly developed in this first volume either, so I wasn't able to kind of connect with either of the two groups, which is a bit of an issue. And then the one other thing I will say about the first volume which annoyed me was the fact that they needed to explain a lot of internet terms. So, like, the best example would be, the you know, they had to explain Flame War. Essentially, one of the cops on this anti-cybercrimes division uh, asks someone, you know, what is a flame war? And I was thinking to myself, oh, good God, how do you get yourself in this anti-cybercrimes division without knowing what a flame war is? Most people at these days have any passing uh, experience with the internet, know what a flame war is. So I just found that, you know, a bit strange, a bit uh, kind of like I was tr trying to figure out why is he asking this now? And, uh, you know... It just seems to me as if, you know, the author felt like, okay, maybe the, the readers will not know what a flame war is, so I have to explain it to them, etc, etc. So, overall, even though I did enjoy the first volume from a story perspective, I did find it a bit disappointing in comparison to what I heard. Ha however, I just want to point out, 
volumes two and three of this series more than made up for this. Like the second and third volumes are absolutely fantastic. First of all, uh, they seriously, seriously develop the characters of Paperboy and his group to the point where we know why they're doing this. Uh, we begin to sympathize with them. We understand, like, it, not to the point where we think that their actions are okay, but we do get to the point where we're kind of like almost rooting for them. We're almost going, okay, we don't want to let you guys get captured by, uh, you know, anti cyber crimes division. Uh, not only that, we get to find out a bit more about Yoshino as well, and that she isn't as charmless a woman, I should say, as, you know, she was portrayed to be in the first volume. Uh, that and the story really starts speeding up. Like, almost every chapter, there's, you know, like a constant chase uh, between um, the anti cyber crimes division and the paperboy in this group. And it, it's just a really, really engaging work. And plus, there's a lot of, you know, fantastic ideas in the second and third about how the internet influences people, how, you know, the anonymity in particular. Uh, means that, you know, people are far, far more going to be aggressive uh, online than they are, you know, when you actually meet them in real life. And uh, also, the, what I also thought was really interesting was there was actually um, a specific section, I believe, in the second volume, where it was kind of pointing out how, you know, like the adults, and, you know, like when I say adults, I'm talking about, you know, over 40 years old people, and, um, you know, the TV networks kind of ignore the opinions and ideas of, you know, everyone that's on the internet. It's almost like the internet doesn't exist to them, which of course is a big, big mistake because, you know, there's a huge amount of information and ideas, you know, ideologies, etc., etc., that are being exported throughout the internet. Uh, so I found that really fascinating. And the ending, wow, I've, I gotta say, I really, really, really liked the ending um, because for one, it, you know, completed the character arc of Paperboy and of Yoshino. Uh, finally turning Yoshino, I will say, into a really sympathetic character. A character who we realize that she actually does have kind of some good under her. And, you know, I, I just love the fact that we got to kind of figure out, you know, we got to understand what happened to all these people afterwards and everything. I really, really liked the ending. And I will say I really, really liked Volumes 2 and 3. If I sounded harsh with Volume 1, it's simply because I was genuinely a little disappointed after finishing Volume 1. Uh, thinking to myself, okay, this is good, but is this what everyone was talking about? But, as I said, Volumes 2 and 3, they really, really make up for it. You know, the, the chase, the ideas, uh, the characterizations, they are all fantastic. So I will say, if you've read the first volume and kind of thought to yourself, okay, maybe this series isn't for me, I would highly recommend you get Volume 2 and probably Volume 3, since you may as well get Volume 3 with it, uh, just to finish it off anyway. It, it gets really, really good in those two volumes. Uh, so I just simply want to say, I really enjoyed this series uh, from Volume 2 and Volume 3 onwards. The biggest flaw, I would say, overall in this series is that first volume. The fact that they need to explain these, uh, you know, cyber terms, that the characterization is a bit slow, that the storytelling is, you know, still setting up essentially for that entire first volume, which in a three-volume series is a big flaw. You know, that'd be, that's perfectly fine in a very long-running series of 20 volumes, but if your vo if series is only three volumes long, you really need to start speeding up relatively fast in the first volume. But then, I just want to say, simply say, second volume, third volume, fantastic. Uh, highly recommended. Um, the artwork in this series is very interesting. For one, it's very realistic looking, uh, particularly when it comes to, you know, like, you know, proportions of the body shapes, uh, of the, you know, the eyes in particular, etc, etc. And uh, the character designs themselves are fantastic. One thing I will say is that the backgrounds are generally kind of bland and uninteresting. Which, like, when there's key details, I should say, you know, like in a, you know, like when they're examining, you know, the scenes of the crime, uh, you know, lots of detail. But in general, the background is relatively bland. But it's made up for with the absolutely fantastic character designs. I'm just trying to get a good example. So, for example, here's a pretty decent page. So as we can see, you know, pretty realistic, you know, uh, eye shapes. Um, pretty nice, you know, smooth detail on them. I would say maybe an ever so slightly soft look to them. Um, definitely a lot of uses of greys and all that, which generally I'm more of a fan of high contrast art, you know, simple black and white. Uh, but I would say that the shading in the series is actually very well done, um, particularly when it comes to the use of lighting. Uh, overall, you know, the artwork, I think particularly of the characters themselves, is fantastic. Backgrounds, not so much. They're not so bad that, you know, they'll distract you. It's just that when, you, when you're when you reading, you kind of realize to yourself, oh, I'm really liking, you know, when they focus on this specific object here, or when they're focusing on the characters, but not so much the general backgrounds. The general backgrounds are a bit bland, so I will say that. 
That, and uh, because of the fact that this isn't really a high-octane action series, there isn't too much dynamic panelling throughout. But the scenes in which there is any action that goes on, the, the dynamic panelling is excellent there as well. So I will say, in general, the panelling is pretty well done in this series. Normal, I would say, for the unit, simple talking sequences. Uh, but then gets really, really fantastically dynamic during any kind of action sequence. So overall, the paneling is excellent in the series, and I will say that the art in general is excellent, just the background's a bit lacking. And then finally, I guess we get to the actual treatment of this by Vertical. Now, uh, if I get my trusty Yatsuba out, we can take a look at his trim size. I believe the trim size is basically the trim size of the Japanese release. So basically, it's this much shorter than um, you know the standard Tonkabon, which, you know, is a, a bit of a shame. Uh, but, you know, I can understand Vertical's opinion on it, that they want to stay loyal to the, you know, original, um, you know, Japanese uh, trim sizes, etc, etc, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, the paper quality itself is very good, um, you know, really fantastic whites, uh, really shows, you know, like the strong, you know, contrasts of, you know, black, grey and white. The actual thickness of the page, though, could be slightly better. There's ever so slightly um, page bleeding every so often. Uh, but in general, it isn't much. It's more of a niggle than an actual flaw in the release. If they had just made the pages ever so slightly thicker, though, it would have worked it out. So I might as well bring it up. The translation itself is very clean, fluid in general. A bit bumpy when it comes, you know, to explaining the terms in the first volume, you know, the cyber terms. But I'd say that that has more to do with the way that the author had written it out originally, rather than the way it was translated. So translation-wise, you know, it's very good overall. I think I only recall out of this, all three of these volumes seeing one, um, you know, kind of grammatical mistake. I think it was like a word was repeated twice and all that, which obviously, you know, was a, you know, an error, but, you know, certainly not worth, you know, lingering on if it's only once throughout the entire three volumes. So overall, very well done. Um, there's colour pages as well at the beginning of each volume, but uh, I was a little disappointed to find out that there were, you know, colour pages in the rest of the volumes that were left in monochrome. I would like to see those in colour, uh, but, you know, I asked Vertical about it and they said that they had just, you know, done the colour pages of all the uh, pages they had been provided with, so it isn't their fault, it's what they could get their hands on. So, overall, what do I think of this series? Um, I really enjoyed it, particularly when it got to uh, Volumes 2 and 3. Volume 1, it was good. I like. I may have sounded particularly harsh in Volume 1, and I just want to say it is still a good volume, it's just not nearly as good as what I had heard uh, Prophecy to be. But Volumes 2 and 3 more than made up for it. This Volumes 2 and 3 like had me like absolutely hooked, gripped, and I just absolutely loved the last two volumes, I will say. So overall, Prophecy was a really, really enjoyable series. I can highly, highly recommend it, particularly if you're interested in, you know, kind of crime stories, particularly those involving the internet, and, um, you know, also a bit of maybe vigilante justice people, you know, like people who are interested in those kind of story. Uh, this would also probably appeal to you. If you're looking for, you know, a comedic, lighthearted series, this won't be for you. This is pretty heavy, uh, particularly with some of the crimes that uh, Paperboy starts, uh, you know, committing. Uh, but, in general, this series is fantastic and I highly, highly recommend that you pick it up. If any of you have actually read the series, I would love to hear what your opinion is on, in the comment below. So, um, you know, just comment away, tell me what you think of Prophecy if you have already read it. And would you share my opinion? Do you think the first one was actually better than how I've been describing it? Did you like maybe like the series less overall, etc, etc. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions on this series, uh, because I can imagine that there, this series would provoke a huge, huge amount of discussion. So anyway, thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye bye